Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so very much for joining us. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Galatians and chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, in a moment, I'm going to read a larger portion than I typically do. I want to read the opening 10 verses of Galatians chapter 2. If it's possible, get your own copy of the Bible out, read along with us, and make sure that what we're saying is found there. I think we get a lot more out of the broadcast in our study if you have your own copy of the Word of God open in front of you. Also, please get something to write with and write on for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think we'll be sharing some things today that you want to jot down. Number two, I want you to be ready at the end of the program when my announcer comes back on and gives to you some means by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. I want to send you, free of charge, a sample packet of all of our gospel tracts. But I'll say more about that here in a moment. Right now, let's uh, remind ourselves of some great hymns. Do you remember that great hymn which says in part, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand? Isn't that a great hymn? Have you sung it recently? How about this one? Have you sung this hymn recently that says, Christ hath redeemed me once for all? What great truth. There is a hymn that, at least from my perspective, has been around for 10 years. I've been singing it off and on for about 10 years. It may go back farther than that. The song, the hymn is entitled, In Christ Alone. I love the hymn. The final verse, or the next to the last verse, says these words, and I quote, No power of hell, no scheme of man could ever pluck me from God's hand till he, referring to Christ, till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand. Now, friend, that is one great statement of theology. That's not only a great theological statement, that's a great statement of assurance and rest, and it brings peace to my soul. Christ, on Christ the solid rock we stand, and nothing can shake us and move us from that rock. You know why? Because by faith I believed in him. Have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, come with me today. I want to have you look at some things that deal with this very basic truth about resting in Christ. First of all, though, in my hand is one of those gospel tracts that I mentioned. Remember the word track is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're talking about a written statement. A gospel track is a short, clearly written presentation of the gospel, how to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, how to know your sins have been taken away. The tract in my hand uh, right now is entitled, Seriously Speaking. Seriously Speaking, the subtitle goes on to say, You May Be Sincerely Wrong. The opening illustration of this particular track deals with a person taking some medicine. They think that they're taking the right bottle of medicine, but they have, they're have they sincere but wrong because the medicine they're taking is really poison. Very simple illustration, but very clear. We use the illustration to help get the point across that many people are sincere in what they think is correct about eternity, about how to have your sins removed, and so on. But in reality, they're sincerely wrong because they're not resting on Christ. This gospel track, seriously speaking, is a clear presentation, a powerful track. Many people use it and seeing people come to Christ. Please let me send you this track as part of that sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. You be ready when my announcer gives the ways and means of contacting us at the end of the broadcast. Well, now 10 verses out of Galatians chapter two, verse one says this, 
Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom, speaking of these false brethren, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour." that purpose statement, that the, God, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also have been forward to do. Ten verses is a longer passage that I normally try to cover in a broadcast, but I want to try to do that today and then end by being very, very practical with what we see here. But to accomplish that, I need to have you be ready to jot down a series of words that all begin with the letter C that will help me quickly walk through these ten verses. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, the word is call. The first C word is call, based upon verses 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul went back to Jerusalem 14 years later. Now, by this time, Paul has been a believer some 14 to 17 years, depending on how you start counting uh, his 14-year time span here. But Paul goes to Jerusalem because God told him to go. Verse 2 says he went by revelation. Paul had no uh, counsel. He was not under the subjection of any counsel. He was not called there to come and, and give a report. He went because God told him to do it. Word number two is the word communication. Communication based upon verse 2. While Paul was at Jerusalem, Paul told the leaders there what he'd been preaching for the last 14 years. In a, in a moment, we're going to see that there were some critics of Paul that were saying some things. So to clarify all the criticism that had been put up against him, Paul communicated the gospel, declared the gospel, laid out the gospel that he'd been preaching for 14 years. Keyword number three is the word compel, compel based upon verse three. Paul took Barnabas and Titus with him to Jerusalem. The critics, you see, were really upset that the Gentile believers in Christ were not told to be circumcised. So Paul takes an actual convert, a co-worker, back with him to Jerusalem to show the saints there that uncircumcised Gentiles are great people and they make great servants of God. Keyword number four, it's the word critics the word critics based upon verses four and five. So who were these critics? Well, the text tells us there, verse four, the text says that they were false brethren. They were counterfeit Christians. Why were they counterfeit? The purpose, their purpose was to put all of the Jesus followers under the bondage to the code of the Old Testament. Their view of spiritual life was not based upon the finished work of Christ, but you had to keep also to be right with God. You had to keep the Mosaic law. Oh, friend, Christ is the end of the law for all those that believe. We got to get that truth sunk into our little peanut butter brains. Key word number five, my word that begins with the letter C is the word continue, based upon verse five. Now, frankly, for me personally, I see the second half of verse five as being the key phrase of the entire second chapter. Why did Paul go to Jerusalem? 
Well, here in verse 5, this is what he says. He went there so that the Gentile believers might, look now, continue in the truth of the gospel. The word continue there means to remain and to stay constant in, to stay whether in, in a certain condition or stay in a certain truth. He wanted the Gentile converts to stay in the truth of Christ. Paul wanted Gentile believers to not abandon their status of being complete in Christ. They were made complete through the merits of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. They were not going to be made more perfect by being forced to keep the Old Testament code of outward acts. The Jews couldn't keep the code to begin with, but the code does not make us perfect. Christ makes us perfect. Key word number six is the word counsel. And if you look at verses six through nine, you'll see where, why I use that word. Paul at Jerusalem met with some key people, but we learned there a very important truth. While some key people may have key roles to play in the work of God, no one is more important to God than any other saint. God does not measure our importance based upon the role we play. Now, Paul tells the council that he's been, what he's been teaching the Gentiles. He does so not uh, that they didn't know the gospel, but he does so because they had been hearing some criticism of Paul, and so this council needs to hear the actual fact straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Well, after Paul tells them what he's been preaching, the trust from these key leaders is revealed by the fact that they give to Paul and Barnabas the symbol of recognition that you are the right people. They give to them the right hand of fellowship. The last word that begins with the letter C is the word care, based upon verse 10. Before the council gets over, they encourage Paul to not forget to care about the poor, and Paul says that he had been doing that right along. Okay. What value do these verses have on our lives? They give us a travel log, so to speak, of the Apostle Paul. Why do we need that? Well, again, I return back to verse 5 to really form the basis of my answer. The critics were telling to to people uh, that to be a genuine Christian, a person with a real right standing with God, that only comes by means of you keeping the Old Testament law. Now, Paul preached that Christ alone, Christ alone makes a convert right with God. Jesus came to fulfill the law on our behalf. None of the Old Testament ceremonies and customs could ever in themselves remove one lick of sin from a person's soul and heart. But the Bible is rather blunt. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We are saved by the work of Christ. He he did the work. He gives us salvation. He gives us total forgiveness as a gift. You and I do nothing at all to be forgiven. Real quickly, I say these to you. Our acceptance with God is a done, complete deal. Our acceptance with God was made by God. It was a work accomplished by him. And our acceptance with God was made in Christ, the beloved, not through the law, not through what you do in Christ. If you're not trusting in Christ alone, you have a shaky, faulty foundation for your faith. Come and trust in Christ and his work alone. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.